What's behind every holiday door within the world of the Nightmare Before Christmas? We've spent time experiencing the frightening and dreadful world of Halloween Town. That town is ruled by the Pumpkin King and is filled with witches, ghosts, and monsters of all kinds. It's a place where death, horror, and the macabre are celebrated all year long. That leader, Jack Skellington, also visited Christmas Town and saw the snow-covered realm where Santa Claus and his elves orchestrated the creation of Christmas. It was a cheerful place with bright lights, warm homes, exciting toys, and a jolly magical aura that followed you everywhere you went. But what's within the rest of the holiday worlds of old? Hello, fun people. Happy Halloween. I'm Isaac Carlson, and I'm super excited to speak to you on the most spookiest of days because after years of wondering what could exist behind all of the holiday doors, the new Nightmare Before Christmas novel, Long Live the Pumpkin Queen, finally provides us with an official description about what lies within them. And spoilers ahead, the book establishes that those aren't the only magical doors that exist. By the way, if you're new here, consider subscribing to help me get to a million subscribers. Now, in the years since Jack attempted to take over Christmas, we're told that he has been exploring all of the holiday worlds. His knowledge of each of the towns, his relationship with the leaders, and how all of the trees worked has grown immeasurably. We even learn in the manga Zero's Journey that he's been working to connect all of the doors to a portal so that he can even more efficiently travel between them. Prior to this new story, all we knew was that each town had a community of beings that spent their day Days preparing their holiday for the human world each year. Each town possessed an identical grove of trees to the ones we saw in Halloween Town. Seven trees grew in a circle and represented one of each of the seven holidays, allowing all of those towns to be connected together. But what did Jack Skellington find in all of the towns? A big turkey was on the entrance to Thanksgiving Town and was described to feel very similar to Halloween Town, except there was a hint of snow in the air since winter was always coming. There were dirt paths that led to a small valley where the town was surrounded by farmland and hills. They grew corn and wheat and, of course, pumpkins, and the townspeople's homes were built with freshly cut logs, and their long wooden tables were filled with feasts. Oh, and flocks of turkeys roamed the forest. Eastertown had a big egg on its tree and was said to be located in a warm and spring-like forest where the grass felt woven and papery. Every surface was covered in strange pastel hues, including the giant rabbits who ran the world. Nested amongst the tall grass and wooden fence posts, there were countless small painted eggs. Instead of a formal town, there was a massive wildflower meadow that featured many huge holes dug into the earth by all of the rabbits who called this place their home. And at the center of it all, there was a gazebo where all the eggs were painted. The big red firework door that led to 4th of July town brought you to a place that was covered in darkness except for when fireworks would explode and light up the sky. The townspeople lived in dome-shaped homes with ceilings all made of glass so that you could watch the fireworks all night. And that's what we learned about there. St. Patrick's Town had a green four-leaf clover on the tree and was established in a small forest that smelled of moss and mint. Paths were set up everywhere that went along cool, rocky streams and over hills. But once you'd go through the thick of the woods, you could get to green fields where tiny homes made of clay and twigs lived. Leprechauns ruled this place. The men had red beards and the women had big rosy cheeks and they spent their days searching for gold at the end of rainbows. Now, Jack saved his first time to Valentine's Town for a special occasion. After Jack and Sally were married, they went to the Holiday of Love on their honeymoon. The heart-shaped door to Valentine's Town led to a place that smelled like sugar cookies and wild roses and featured a gate with tiny hearts all across it. There were cherry blossom trees and gardens and a cobblestone street lined with buildings with pink tiled roofs and heart frame windows that had stained glass that looked like melted sugar. Chocolate flowed along in their rivers. At the center of town, there was a pink love potion used by the cupids who flew around to make people fall in love. But there were also bleeding heart flowers which make people have a broken heart. The leader of the town was Queen Ruby Valentino, who was taller than Jack with tiny white embroidered hearts stitched across her cream colored fabric and she possessed beautiful strawberry red hair. But those were not all of the magical towns that existed. Every year that passes, my love for the Nightmare Before Christmas continues to increase. While I didn't embrace the movie when I was little, now I appreciate how weird, bold, and unique the whole world is. So I was so happy to find out that in the darker and 
quieter part of the woods, past the circle of holiday doors, there was a collection of long forgotten trees that led to ancient realms that existed long before any of the holidays. There was an entire orchard of magical uncharted trees that could bring you to beings like Father Time, Old Man Winter, and the Tooth Fairy. Of course, the Pumpkin King and Queen are committed to exploring all of those lands, but the one that they already experienced was Dreamtown. On Dreamtown's tree, there was a blue crescent moon. The town existed in a place where everything smelled like lavender and freshly brewed chamomile tea. Everyone wore pajamas and the clouds hung over everything, making it a constantly sleepy place. There were perfect rooms for deep sleep and the citizens spoke in rhymes so that they could create poems to relax humans. Their most important magical creation though was Dream Sand, which was capable of putting anyone from outside of Dreamtown to sleep. While this is where the Sandman came from, the true leaders of this land were a pair of rag dolls named Greta and Albert, who turned out to be the true parents of Sally Skellington. To hear more about Sally's entire tragic backstory that was revealed in Long Live the Pumpkin Queen though, I've linked my video on that topic below, or you can experience the full book by getting the audiobook through my Audible trial in the description. I personally listened to this book through Audible, as I do most books now, and I appreciated all of the music and narration that made the story very entertaining to listen to. Using my link will allow you to get this audiobook or any audiobook of your choosing for free, and you can keep it forever even if you don't renew your subscription. Subscription. While you're down there, if you'd like to get my extremely comfortable Queen of Halloween t-shirt or you'd like to get some other magical clothing and goodies, check out the relaunched merch store at imaginativestore.com. Finally, thanks for watching and have a magical day.